So before I actually start this video, I'm going to just make a quick disclaimer. For some reason, my mic is not consistently picking up my voice, so sometimes my voice is going to be very quiet, and other times my voice is going to be very loud. I've done my absolute best to try to balance it in editing, but there might be some parts where it's too quiet or other times it's too loud. I do apologize for that, but I have recorded this exact video like four times, and I'm sick of doing it, so this is what you're going to get. I do apologize, and I do hope that by the time I upload my next video, it will be back to normal. So anyways, with that out of the way, hopefully you enjoy this video. How's it going everybody and welcome back to another video. I thought in today's video I would do a different type of video from what I've usually done. I This is my first time tackling a tier list video. I am a big fan of tier list videos. I watch pretty much tier lists of any kind, whether it's a certain game, movie series, you name it. And I thought it'd be kind of fun to do one, especially for a game that I've been playing pretty much exclusively for the last couple of weeks. I've picked up the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, which includes all three games and the DLCs. And I've been playing pretty much nothing but Mass Effect <laughs> for the last couple of weeks. Uh, Mass Effect has become one of my favorite game series. It's just, it's phenomenal. I could probably sit here and talk about how great it is but I'll probably save that for a video in the future. But I thought for today's video, we would do a Mass Effect Trilogy Squad Mates tier list. This will not cover Andromeda because, because listen, if Krogans sound like this. You put the colony at risk over a grudge you carry? What the hell is even that? But anyways, let's just, let's just hop right into this. So I have the different tiers, so I, I kind of had the idea of doing the different tiers based on the different levels of the Normandy. The very bottom is just get off my ship. They If they're, if they're even on my ship, like, I, I will kick them off. I will leave them on Vermeer. I, <laughs> I will put them in the vents in the suicide mission. Um, I absolutely just do not like these characters. Uh, as of... As I'm looking through, there's only one that's going to be in this tier, and if you've played the trilogy, you probably know who it is, but I won't spoil anything just yet. And then we have Cargo Bay, Engineering Deck, Crew Lounge, Command Center, and the Tippity Top, which is Cabin Roommates. These are pretty much the best of the best. These are definitely squad mates I would take 99% of the time if I have the choice to. Sometimes you're sometimes you have to take other squad mates whether it's a loyalty mission or if you're just starting The game so you're not gonna have as many options. All right. Um, I don't know exactly how I Don't know what order I'm gonna go in exactly Let's 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 just let's start with Zaid. Why not? We'll start with Zaid um, Zaid for me personally, he's gonna be a cargo bay. I don't think he's horrible but Zaid is just not a very memorable character. I don't really like his loyalty mission. While I do appreciate the idea of if you want him to be loyal to you, you have to make a renegade option. In the loyalty mission, he goes after Vito, who is like a longtime nemesis of his. Zaid decides to blow up the, the warehouse. Or I, don't, I, don't, I don't remember exactly where it's at. He blows it up, which means... You know, it's going to kill the workers. However, you can go save the workers, the innocent workers, but yet Vito gets away. So you have to just sacrifice all those workers to get Vito because uh, he's a freaking dumbass. But yeah, Zaid just really didn't click with me personally. So he's going to be in Cargo Bay. I don't think he's horrible. I'm not going to put him in the uh, get off my ship tier. But I am going to put him in Cargo Bay. Uh, next we have Rex. When we have Rex and Grunt. I'm going to put them both in Command Center. Honestly, both these guys are great. I, I like them both equally. I don't really prefer one Krogan over the other. I, I will say Rex in Mass Effect 1 was probably the best, not just because he was an actual squad mate, but that confrontation you had with him on Vermeer. He claims that this is actually the cure for the Genophage, and blowing this facility up will mean that the Krogans will never get the cure. So that was a pretty big moment in Mass Effect 1. 
Grunt being a tank breed, you know, and he's kind of like not seen as a true Krogan. I just think both Rex and Grunt are really good characters. And I also have a soft spot for Krogans. They're just, they're hilarious. Uh, next we have Tally. Tally Vas Normandy. She gets cabin roommates. Uh, Tally, not only is she my favorite romance option for male Shepard, she is also just one of my favorite characters in the trilogy. She is a squad mate in all three games, and she is consistently good. She's just, she's just great. Um, the first game, she was kind of like this mysterious Quarian, you know, you didn't really know much about her. The second game, she opens up a lot more, especially because she's now a romance option, and in the third game, she's still pretty good. She becomes an admiral. She kind of has like this conflict in her head where she, you know, she is an admiral, but she doesn't think she deserves the role. Um, I also really liked the whole storyline with the Quarians versus the Geth, them going back and forth, basically having this civil war. And then you find out that the Quarians actually built the Geths, and then the Reapers took over the Geth. It was just... It's a really phenomenal storyline. While her romance scenes were kind of on the weaker end, it makes sense because she like wears the outfit. They can't really reveal a lot. I still, I, I'm still kind of upset that they never actually revealed her face. Granted, you do get like a picture frame if you choose to romance her, but I just kind of wish we would actually get to see her face. I, but at the same time, I kind of understand the whole mystery behind it. But with that being said, Tally definitely deserves the top of the tier list. Edie's a tough one. I do like Edie, but I don't think I could put her in command center. Edie's honestly crew lounge for me. I don't think she's bad, but I just... I kind of feel like they could have done more with Edie personally. And I'm not just talking like giving the chance to romance her. And listen, like crew lounge isn't bad, right? Right? You know, it's not as good as command center. I just, I don't think Edie's better than Grunt or Rex. But she is, she's definitely in the upper half. Just isn't as great as some of the other squad mates in the tier list. Uh, Samara, uh, I'm going to put her in an engineering deck. Her romance kind of sucks. Because <laughs> it's like, you, you can't even like truly romance her. You could just flirt with her in 2, and then in 3, you can get a scene in the Citadel DLC, but it's just like a hug. It's not anything too crazy that's not the reason why i don't like her it's more of just the fact that she's just wasn't like we already have an asari and which is liara and liara is just way better than samara i i will admit samara kind of being like this you know she lives by the code being a just a car and all that i did really like her loyalty mission because you can choose between samara or morinth i've personally never taken morinth i've always taken samara if any of you have taken Morinth, you know, tell me what that's like. But personally, Samara just wasn't as great as she could have been. Morden? Morden, I'm gonna put... In cabin Roommates. I really liked his loyalty mission in the second game. He also is just a really funny character. <laughs> The fact that he talks like really fast, he just, anything he thinks he just says out loud, it's pretty funny. But I think where Morden really shines is in the third game, because the Salarians have always been like, they've, they've hated the Krogan, let's be real. They just, they just don't like the Krogan, they don't trust him. And Morden being so set on curing the Genophage, in, you know, even if that means that he sacrifices his life so that Krogans can reproduce and they can continue uh, growing. I just thought it was a very phenomenal turning point for Morden. You know, it had to be Morden because somebody else could have gotten it wrong. I also do think Morden's death was one of the better ones. I mean, it was sad, but just the way they did it was... It was very good. I thought uh, it was very well done. All right, next we have Miranda. Um... I'm actually surprised they didn't just put a picture of her ass because I feel like we see her ass more than we do her face. <laughs> like, come on, let's be real here. She, she is, she's the poster girl of Mass Effect 2. There's no, there's no denying that. You can't deny that. Well, with that being said, I don't think she's bad. 
She she was kind of like an asshole at the beginning of 2, but she does get better towards the end. And then I thought she was pretty good in 3. Her romance is not worth it. I'm just going to say it right now, it's not worth it. It's not. But uh but yeah, I'm going to I'm going to put her in engineering deck. Um then we have Ashley. I'm going to save Ashley for when we get to Caden because I I want to talk about them both. So we'll skip Ashley for now. Legion easily top of command center. It was so cool when, like, because like, you're fighting Geth for Mass Effect 1 and Mass Effect 2, and then the game gives you a Geth as a squad mate. I just thought that was such a cool plot twist. I'm just like, wait, what the fuck? What is this? What? And, like, he talks about how the Geth were actually being controlled by the Reapers and his, like, commitment to just for the Geth to have a better future. I thought that was really cool. It kind of going off with... Or going off with what I said about um, Tally, the fact that, you know, the Geth and the Corians, they just have like their feud between each other, basically a civil war. I the big the big downside to Legion personally is you can't have them as a squad mate until you get the Reaper IFF, and at that point, you're just you're committed to being in the game, so you don't get really a lot of time with Legion, and then in the third game he's not a squad mate at all. I will also say that his his death scene was, it just kind of felt off. Like it just kind of felt like it could have been a lot longer than it was. It just kind of seemed like it was cut short. But even with that, I still think he deserves Command Center. He's just such a cool, like he's one of the cooler additions um, in the Mass Effect trilogy. Just It was just such a big like surprise when you got a Geth fighting at your side and then everybody's like, like, Shepard, why do we have a freaking Geth on our ship? What is this? <laughs> but yeah, no, Legion definitely deserves Command Center. He's such a cool character. Kasumi, I'm I'm going to put Kasumi in Cargo Bay. I, I'm sorry. No, I'm not sorry. Kasumi was just lost potential. She could have been so much better, but her overall involvement was so minimal compared to everybody else. In the second game, you have her loyalty mission, which was kind of cool. It was kind of like a heist type of loyalty mission, but in the end, it just wasn't really that great. She's basically like stuck in the past. She 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 can't like move on from the death of her ex, which I kind of understand that, but at the same time, it kind of hurts her character and her overall character development since she's stuck. Just she's, she's practically stuck in the uh, the past. And then in the third game, she'll be there with you for one mission, and it's not even like a story mission, it's like a Citadel mission that takes like five minutes to complete. While I wish she was a lot better, you know, we just didn't really get a lot from her. Alright, let's talk about both Caden and Ashley. Okay, I'm going to say this right now, and I will only say this once. Ashley is not a racist, okay? I know, some of you are probably going like, What do you freaking mean? She literally says she doesn't trust aliens. No, you're wrong. Alright, this is actually her thoughts. And if you would actually talk to her, you would, she would say the exact same thing. Her whole thing is, she doesn't trust the council. She she fears that if the council, um, like the, the Turians, the Quarians, not, not Quarians, sorry, uh, the Asari, Salarians, if their races are in danger... She believes that the council would pretty much throw the human race into the crossfire, resulting in humans going extinct if it meant that they could survive. That's pretty much her whole idea. And it makes sense. Like, I, I understand her reasons. With that being said, even though I did just defend Ashley, I don't think she's that great. She's not that interesting. And the same thing with Caden. I didn't really bond with them or like I just talking to them was never really that interesting and this is just in the first game all right in the third game Ashley and Caden get a lot better so for that I think because of that I'm gonna put them both in engineering deck because while I don't think they're horrible and the fact that they do get better in the third game and the fact that Ashley is not a racist all right Okay, that's like an excuse as to why you don't like her. Javik. Javik is going to get a crew lounge tier. 
I don't think Javik is bad. I mean, he's kind of like... I think Javik was, is pretty cool. You know, he's a he's the only living Prothean. He's kind of... He's kind of a dick. Let's be real here. <laughs> he's, he's not really likable at first. I mean, as you, like, keep talking to him, you know, he does get better. And his whole, the whole scene with him in the Citadel DLC, where you're, like, filming a TV show, I thought that was pretty funny. But, he, you know, while he is pretty cool, he's kind of a dick. But he does get better, like, as the story goes on. He does get better. But I think I'm still just, I'm just, just gonna put him in crew lounge anyway. James. Oh, man. I... I don't like James, but I'm just going to put him in Cargo Bay. He's not funny. He doesn't add anything to the story. I I would put him in Get Off My Ship, but if I'm being totally honest, I don't think he's bad enough to be to be put in the very bottom tier. I just he just really he I I kind of consider him as a filler character. In the fact that he just adds absolutely nothing to the story. They just added him in just so that there was more character options in the squad selection. I'm totally convinced that's why he's in it. I will admit, there were a couple of times that I did like James. Like, for example, in the very beginning, when you're on Mars and the uh, that chick was about to get away. And James was like, no, you're freaking not. And he freaking crashes the shuttle. I will admit that was pretty amusing. But apart from that, I just, he just really, I don't like him as much just because of how uninteresting he is. He just, besides that one moment, which is in the very beginning of the game, just wasn't, I just wasn't interested. I don't really like him. Jacob Taylor. <laughs> oh man, oh man. Um... So you know how I said that I was going to leave this tier for one character? Um, Jacob Taylor is that character. This guy sucks. He, Jacob, really, really sucks. He is by far the worst. And I know I kind of said, I know I said bad things about James and Saeed and Kasumi. But they are phenomenal compared to Jacob. This guy freaking sucks. Here's why. I'm not going to go into the full explanation because this is going to this video will take forever. But the reason I hate Jacob so much is because it's not the fact that he's boring. It's not the fact that he's not interesting to talk to. It's not the fact that he's the only romance option that cheats on you and you can't do anything about it. He does cheat on you. He's supposed to be this character that that he, he's supposed to like be your best friend right you know he's he's like the guy that you can trust while you're working for Cerberus but he fails to do that in any way possible Miranda is a way better friend than Jacob and that's saying something because she's supposed to kind of be the asshole while Jacob was supposed to be the friend or like the bro but I'm sorry I already have a bro that's freaking Garrus. I haven't even told you where he's going to go in the tier yet, but just based on saying that, you probably know where he's going to go. Jacob just, he sucks. Next we have Jack. When I first played through Mass Effect 2, I did not romance Jack. And at that point, I would have put her in like, engineering deck, maybe crew lounge. But after doing a playthrough and actually romancing her, she became a solid a tier the command center tier she is a really good character if you romance her i know some of you are probably think well yeah if you romance them they like they open up more to you but the thing about jack is if you don't romance her she doesn't really tell you much whereas if you do she talks about her past she talks about what the tattoos are she like what the like why she has so many tattoos she talks about a relationship she had that ended up going very badly um her loyalty mission is also really good it's one of my favorites she honestly just becomes a very well written character and again that's if you choose to romance her so if you're if you're somebody that's like i don't really like jack but you haven't romanced her yet honestly just even if you use a save editor just 
just romance or talk to her. She really opens up. She becomes a really, she becomes a way more interesting character. The big downside to Jack, and it's not actually the Jack's fault. It's the freaking way that Bioware programmed the game. If you choose to romance her and you do the Citadel DLC, usually your love interest will meet you at the very beginning of the Citadel DLC and they'll say stuff like, ooh, nice outfit and kind of like sound very seductive. If you romance Jack, the game replaces Jack with Liara temporarily and it's so freaking weird. <laughs> like, no disrespect to Liara, she's freaking great. It's just like, why couldn't they just get Jack? I just feel like that would make a lot of sense. But with that being said, I think Jack is a really good character, especially if you choose to romance her. She opens up a lot more, talks about her dark past, and uh, you also get some very saucy scenes. Oh yeah. Who doesn't like that when you play Mass Effect? Alright, Liara, easily the best romance option in one. Um, I really liked her in the Shadow of the Broker DLC. She wasn't a squad mate, but in three, she becomes a squad mate again, and she's pretty good. In the first game, she's like this very shy, innocent kind of kind of character. But as the trilogy goes on, she becomes a lot more mature, a lot more professional, um, and honestly, just becomes a better character. Like, I don't think Liara had any sort of like weakness or any. I I've never really had any issues with her in terms of her character development or her storyline. I kind of, I, I really liked the direction they took with Liara, so, I mean, yeah, honestly, she's a cabin roommate, there's no question about that. She's pretty good, she's also very iconic, and I understand why. Garrus. Garrus. Buddy. I hate to do this to you guys. I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. I just know it. He's going to get a cabin's roommate. Garrus is... You know what? I think I'm going to put him here. I'm going to put him at the tippity top. Garrus is, without a doubt, the best squad mate in the whole franchise. Tally is a very close contender to being first. The reason I'm putting Garrus at the very top is... Whether you're playing male shepherd or female shepherd, whether you choose to romance him or not, he is just a very solid character. Just without a doubt. He's such a fun character to talk to. I love his loyalty mission in the second game. And I really liked his whole, like, his storyline. Like, in the first game, he was a C-Sec officer just trying to get some dirt on Saren. In the second game, he's a lot darker in terms of like, he talks to you about his uh, squad being killed and it's all because of one Turian named Sedonis. So his whole loyalty mission is to assassinate him, which it, it kind of brings out a darker side to Garrus. And then in the third game, he just, he's just a solid bro. And again, if you choose to romance him, he's one of the better romance options, probably the best female shepherd romance option, in my opinion. And even if you don't romance him, he's the bromance is top tier. Garrus is just a great character. I there's nothing bad about Garrus. Like he's he's a bro. He's just a straight up bro. And yeah, he's just he's great. Garrus is a phenomenal character. And then we have Thane. Thane is going to get command center. Thane I really liked. I like his whole I mean it's it's it kind of sucked that he was dying of Keprel's Keprel syndrome, is that how it's pronounced? You know, he's a he's an assassin that's dying, but his wish is to uh, make sure his son doesn't get involved in the life of crime. So there's that whole thing in his loyalty mission. I also really liked him in three. If you talk to him enough times in three, he ends up fighting that Cerberus assassin and saves the Solarian Counselor, but he does end up dying because of that, and the scene with him in the hospital with his son, uh, Kolyat, it was it was a very well done scene, and even the funeral in the Citadel DLC, it just everything about that was so touching, they did, it was perfect, and, he, and just as a character, I think Thane is really cool, really cool to talk to. 
I also didn't know he was a romance option. I was not aware of that. Um, but anyways, yeah, that is going to be the Mass Effect Trilogy Squadmates tier list. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you want to see more content like this, yeah, if you want to see a tier list where I talk about the squadmates in terms of their abilities and their skills in combat, I could do something like that in the future. I'll have to do a lot more uh, experimentation because there, there, I will admit, there are some that I just never take. So <laughs> I'll have to figure that one out. I have to do some experimenting and figure that out. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. And without further ado, I will see you in the next one. Later.